Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we'll be talking about this incredible blizzard that will be occurring across a good portion of the United States. Notice we have this Weather Ready Nation map by the National Weather Service absolutely covered with all sorts of watches. I mean, we have winter storm warnings, winter storm watches, winter weather advisories, we have blizzard warnings, we have wind chill watches, wind chill warnings, wind chill advisories, hard freeze warnings. I mean, you can name a, a whole bunch more and you still would have more than have to name uh, truly an incredible storm system and there have been quite a bit of changes and I kind of want to address those um, right now currently on the radar of the United States this is what it uh, this is what it looks like so do note Nebraska South Dakota Colorado Iowa Minnesota Wisconsin you're kind of starting to see that snow and again we're kind of still in early stages of this system um, and again snow with this is only one part of the story as the National Weather Service said it's probably the third tertiary I'm um, concerned as the first is the cold and the second is uh, the wind. So that is definitely the most concerning part of the storm. Northwest. So let's start off across the Northwest. Again, skip to your region as you, um, wherever you live, South Central United States, skip to that video. It should be labeled if you live across the North, etc. Let's start off with the Northwest. Again, this system is mainly done for you. We do have the remnants of the storm across Southern Wyoming and into Northern Colorado that will spill into tonight. Total snowfall from that is going to be rather limited still. It's going to bring a little bit of uh, snow nonetheless and again it doesn't take much to create uh, travel uh, conditions that are going to be pretty hard to go through and what's not so no the southern wyoming northern colorado northeast utah you're going to be seeing uh, several inches of snow pile on and uh, other than the snow right after this there's going to be incredibly cold air moving in for the good part of the northwest here you can see these anomalies are really going to be terrifically uh, impressive so some of these temperatures just to give you a little uh, you know feel for this are going to be negative 36 negative 27 that's you know when you spend a few minutes outside you could get frostbite really dangerous stuff you don't want to get caught out in that so uh, good news is for the northwest that quickly breaks you could see we see more of a seasonal if not warmer temperatures breaking in and what that means is in terms of precipitation well you see a lot more rain and a lot more activity as that pacific moisture gets in so notice that on monday tuesday next week storm after storm for the northwest so the activity is not done um in fact the northwest for you obviously this big system is pretty much done for you this blizzard but you're gonna have a lot more systems to deal with in the long range and these look also very impactful and powerful so that is that and just to give you a little taste of this in terms of the total precipitation you can see a, uh, rain and snow kind of all combined obviously heaviest towards the coast but the snowfall along the mountain ranges also you're very prolific the bitter roots the cascades <clears throat> <clears throat> into um, British Columbia, into the Grand Tetons, the Wasatch, and Colorado, Colorado Rockies. So, incredible snow there. Let's move on now towards the southwestern United States. As again, this is another area that will be impacted, but very minimally compared to other areas that, you know, will get slammed by this blizzard. Notice there's that snow moves into Colorado, barely makes it into New Mexico if at all. Again, total snowfall from this perspective is also going to be rather limited. You can see mainly just a few inches in mountainous areas, maybe up towards a foot in some areas. The biggest news story here will be the cold. And you can see that the temperature anomalies here will be fierce. Um, and it's kind of funny how it doesn't get all the way down here. So again, California, Nevada, Arizona, you guys are fine. Southern Utah, Western New Mexico, notice Eastern New Mexico, that contrast, very cold. And the other side, very warm. So that's going to be something something that's pretty interesting but do note that that cold air uh, moves away pretty quickly as we head into next week and just like for the uh, northwest the southwest does get in on the activity which is good news these areas need that moisture and you can see uh, it's going to be one storm after the other hitting the sierras and potentially you know doing their best to fill in these reservoirs that are running uh, historically low still so this is <clears throat> definitely an encouraging sign uh, for people that live here and you can see that this just literally continues storm after storm so that's gonna be definitely something we will have to well we will have to watch and you know hopefully we do get a lot of precipitation here uh, in terms of the total precip again this will change but you can see it's looking pretty promising let's now move to an area where this storm this blizzard is going to be a lot more impactful areas you know i'll have to spend a little bit more time on because well this thing is just starting to get going as i showed you on the radar it's it's beginning already but notice that as i put this into motion we see right now currently not that many winds, but by tomorrow, so this is now midnight tonight, and this is now to 6 a.m. tomorrow, this thing starts moving into Illinois, Wisconsin, further eastward. This is now 12 p.m. Notice we see still rain on these areas, which makes us also a concern for flash freeze. You know, Indiana, Ohio, you'll see pretty warm temperatures. You know, not incredible, but it will be enough to make any snow that is on the ground melt, or obviously the rain that is falling just create, you know, water. 
Uh, and basically, the temperatures are going to fall so quick and so fast, all of that's not really going to be able to evaporate or disappear, and some that's going to freeze over, and then snow's going to fall on top. So it could really create a nasty scenario. Do notice that as the system progresses into Indiana and Ohio, the low pressure itself, that's when the winds really start picking up. So say for Iowa, Minnesota, your blizzard is not going to necessarily occur when it's snowing. It's going to occur when it's already fallen, but it's going to get picked up by these winds. These winds are going to be incredible. So, And that's a misconception that you need, uh, you need snow or even heavy snow for a blizzard you don't even need to have snow falling from the ground all you need is all you need is um strong winds that are enough to pull up the snow that is laying on the ground and reduce visibilities for three hours or more i think a fourth of a mile or less for um at least yeah uh, three hours and the winds have to be 35 miles per hour or greater which all of that will meet the criteria for a good portion of minnesota blizzard conditions across illinois um into wisconsin uh into indiana into michigan as well um again not necessarily maybe a blizzard across these areas though we'll have to see the national weather service may expand these blizzard warnings yeah, you can see right there it's across mainly iowa for now as this thing progresses through the day on thursday into friday you can see it quickly moves away but cities like detroit columbus you guys all get in on this snowfall um you know earlier there's uh, I, I saw a few comments saying that oh we'll just get a few inches here in southeastern michigan with the recent changes in track they look as if you know you'll get a lot more than just than just a few inches it'll be quite a bit more and those really strong winds will probably make you uh, again, regret that you wanted all that snow there. Notice uh, into the UP, also very heavy snow, and obviously into southern Canada. By the time this is all said and done, it's around Monday, Wednesday, and, or Sunday, Monday, and you can see those winds start letting up as well. But again, we're dealing with, at that point, the very, very cold air. Um, I want to show you some of these snowfall amounts, um, and I'm not going to show you the 10 to 1 ratio because <clears throat> those are just simply incorrect. So let me go on this website, show you that snow. Click on an hour by the time the system's done. Kuchera, okay, so this is the appropriate snowfall ratios. Again, the GFS, you can see favors a lot of these areas across Michigan, Ohio, picking up uh, quite a bit of that heavy, heavy snowfall. Will it be as heavy as what this GFS shows? You know, Detroit seeing almost 17 inches. I don't think so, but there's definitely a possibility of you seeing uh, quite a bit. Um, notice across, you know, areas like Chicago, a lot of that snowfall did decrease. And again, you know, that's the thing with these, uh, with this system, right? Uh, there was a lot of forecasting change, and again, it's not necessarily a snow that's the biggest concern here because you can see the snowfall footprint while it is pretty significant especially as you go into canada uh, the main main cause is uh, again those very cold temperatures and those fierce winds that are going to cause bitter cold um, wind chills but also obviously that snow that blows around so it's, you're not even going to be able to measure six inches of snow it's going to be very chaotic to say the least so um, do note that uh, that is definitely something we will um, you know, we will have to uh, keep in account that uh, some of the snowfall here is going to be a little bit off. If you look at that European high res, it doesn't have the Kuchera on this website because you have to pay for it. Um, but let's just take a look at the 10 to 1 ratios. You can see it also favors Michigan and whatnot. But again, these amounts right here are too low. That's a, that assumes a 10 to 1 ratio is going to be much higher. So, uh, you know, Detroit, Ohio, Indianapolis, even Chicago, right? Seeing one inch there, the Europeans probably uh, being a little bit too quick with that. And in order to take a look at more, probably some more accurate measurements, you could take a look at something like um, maybe the HER model, which you can see every few hours goes out 48 hours. And if you take a look at that <clears throat> total snowfall here, um, total positive snow, that's probably a bit more accurate. You can see it shows also decent amounts. Again, these are probably all a little bit too low because this assumes, it tries assuming the snowfall ratio, but this is, it's just inaccurate. You can mark my word on that, which is why the National Weather Service puts out, you know, a bit more snow according to this. Four inches, maybe three across the Twin Cities, according to National Weather Service. It's, you know, it's going to be a bit more. So uh, that is that. Um, and I now want to uh, go back now and uh, show you some of these cold, cold, cold temperatures that are going to be occurring across this area. Again, this is probably, you know, the, the biggest news story out of all of this. Um, incredible cold behind this thing. And yeah, I mean, truly, truly something that's going to be life-threatening. Uh, the biggest concern is by far this cold. You can see 6 p.m. on Friday. By the time this is mainly done across the Midwest, the two-meter temperature are shaded in terms of Fahrenheit <clears throat> are well into the negatives across most of these areas, Indiana, Ohio. You know, not, not, not terribly negative. Up here, it's very bad. Further south, it's not too bad, but regardless, it's very dangerous. You can see that sticks on for a while, though by midweek next week, warming up. Let's move on to the south central United States now, and let me show you some of this activity that's going to be going on here. Again, this is another area that is going to be definitely interesting. 
to watch. Let's take a look at the let's take a look at the her model and go back to the model one that we are looking for. So Kansas City, you could start seeing some snow showers as early as again tonight. We're right, uh, going on uh, as I'm recording this video, and then you can see that the, the stronger cold front passes through into uh, Kansas, into Missouri. Again, you can see the model kind of struggles with this painting where the most consistent snow will be. So again, don't get too caught up by this. Again, the conditions are going to be pretty miserable with those strong winds and very cold weather. And you can see Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Southern Missouri. Um, again, if you're in Oklahoma City, you may get a few flakes. Doesn't look like a massive event. Tennessee, Kentucky, you're gonna get, pick up at least a few inches, so you know that's pretty cool. You're into Mississippi, potentially into Alabama as well. How this tail looks like, again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit questionable, so don't get too caught up by that. But according to the her model, assuming incorrect snowfall ratios, you can see that it's 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 a pretty minor event. That's what it looks like. But you could easily multiply this by two or three. So if you're seeing two inches, I would say appropriate would probably anywhere from three to six. So um, and then across Tennessee, Kentucky, the ratios may be a bit more accurate because it's further towards the south, so not as cold. But eventually, the cold air does end up impacting everyone. And if you're to take a look at the GFS anomaly. You can see that cold air is incredible, and uh, yeah, this thing's gonna be powerful. It's definitely gonna be a cold front that we haven't seen in these type of areas for a while. Notice Arkansas, Missouri, negatives, negatives, uh, all single digits potentially, and well below freezing all the way to the Gulf Coast. And you know that comes out ahead of a pretty nice day that we could be experiencing even tomorrow. But that cold front sweeps through, and yeah, definitely something that even these areas are gonna be you know remembering pretty vividly. And this area is no. No, um, no stranger to pretty crazy uh, weather swings, especially these powerful cold fronts that sweep through, uh, you know, the Colorado Rockies and whatnot. So that is that for this area. Again, it's going to be pretty impactful. If you look at the National Weather Service, there are a bunch of advisories here issued, wind chill watches, wind chill advisories, depending on where you are. Oklahoma City is under, under a wind chill warning. So again, a little bit of that snow, but the main story is that wind chill warning. And if you take a look at some of these temperatures, they're going to be very cold, 20 to 25 degrees below with that wind. So it may not be too cold, negative one Fahrenheit but with that wind it's gonna feel cold notice we have flash or hard freeze warnings all the way into Florida as well let's move on to the Northeast as this is another area of the United States where this thing is going to be very impactful obviously and it's going to be leaving a lot of uh, folks with your potentially a mess. So do note that initially there will be a little surge of moisture, bring some snow into Pennsylvania, maybe West Virginia as well, maybe into Maryland. Do note that this thing mainly then <clears throat> spreads into rainfall as it moves up the northeast coast. Um, and again, by the time we get into, say, Friday, this thing, this low pressure, really starts intensifying. Really strong winds, um, especially in the southwestern side, and we see that cold air sweep in, so it catches up to some of that rain. And there could be a brief three to four hour window where you know even New Jersey, New York City, maybe get some snow. Up in New York, again, exact precise timing of this is a kind of a fool's errand. You can see that the models are showing obviously that 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 thud of snow, three to five hour period, very very heavy snow. It will start off being wet, slushy, and then quickly quickly switch to a powdery snow as that cold um, really catches up even within that three to five hour period um, so you can see a lot of these southern Canadian cities lined up along the St. Lawrence River Valley you're going to start off as uh, you know maybe a little bit of snow then kind of getting in on some wet snow rain and then a thud of snow and you know depending on how much snow you get uh, you will obviously see varying impacts for that but regardless the cold moves in for everyone and uh, this cold kind of sticks down here for the northeast so looking at some of the total snowfall accumulations according to the GFS let's take a look at this website assuming the correct snowfall ratios you could see that uh, with their most newest model run you can see that across some of the areas even though you start off as rain you know that little thud of snow could really drop quite a bit of snow here just north maybe potentially you know even feet of snow um, and lake effect uh, snow obviously also kick in after this system's done so that could also orient some showers and uh, whatnot into pretty populated areas as that cold is going to be kind of coming in from the south and west as opposed to a north and west flow. Notice though along the coast, nothing too significant. And again, the models are struggling trying to forecast the snow. And that's just kind of how this uh, goes. Again, some of these amounts across, you know, even Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, Ohio, they may be a bit overdone. But it's an, a very a, a complex system, so I would not be surprised to see several areas being, you know, uh, having an upset in terms of more snow than expected or, you know, downside where it's a lot less. So 
very interesting. Uh, and again, this thing is going to be pretty much done, though, thankfully, by the time we're, you know, reaching uh, New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve and then into Christmas Day. This thing's all done for the whole entire United States, including the Northeast. Last region I want to address is the Southeastern United States. Thank thankfully for you guys, the impacts are still somewhat limited. You will see a little bit of rain, especially across the Carolinas and into Virginia. Um, but North Carolina is seeing some pretty heavy rain. Then you notice that snow pushing into Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Georgia. Again, how this exactly looks like, how far south that snow gets at the fool's errand. Read your National Weather Service forecast discussion for the details on that because looking at the model, especially like the GFS, is very tricky and very hard. Obviously, notice that once this system passes through the cold, it reaches everyone across the southeast. And just to show you some of these temperature anomalies, it's going to be cold. Maybe not as cold as across the north central United States, but if you look at some of the two meter temperature, you know, thermometer readings, if you live across Georgia, Atlanta, right, you may be used to having a pretty nice warm fall. And look, you're going to be seeing 12 degrees there Saturday morning, Christmas Eve. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be cold regardless of how you put it. Maybe where the snowpack is, it could be even colder across single digits. So that is definitely something to watch for. Notice this cold gets well into Florida. Maybe the extreme southern areas just being in the 40s and 50s. So everybody gets impacted by this. No one really gets spared from the cold air. Um, and the winds may not get as strong across the southeast here as they will up towards the north. Still, though, you can see that according to the National Weather Service there, you know, they have, what, what do they have here? Yeah, wind chill, wind chill, uh, wind chill advisories. And you can see they will be reaching negative feels like. So you may step outside and be like, oh, 18 degrees in Georgia. You know, it's cold, but it's not too bad. But it actually feels like negative too with the winds. So, yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely a little bit of a change in perspective there, to say the least. Let's look at the long range now, because obviously this system is prolific in most senses, right? I mean, incredible snow, incredible winds, dangerous situations, especially if there's going to be power outages because of either the snow or the melting snow where there is snow, the rain, and these strong, strong winds. Obviously, once that cold air moves in, if you don't have the heat, that could really be a precarious situation. So that's, you know, why this system is so concerning. Again, it's not always all about that snow. And in this case, again, the snow is not even, maybe a, a, it's not even a secondary concern. It's more of a third area, tertiary concern, as the National Weather Service was saying. So that is something I definitely wanted to point out um, and notice that that system eventually makes its way into Canada 962 millibars I mean that's that's a bomb literally a bomb cyclone here so incredible strength and incredible growth on this system I do want to also address one thing. Once this cold air moves away, you can see we might have a little bit of a clipper trying to make its way into the Dakota, Nebraska area. But look, the northwest gets very active, or just the west coast. That in induces a lot of warm uh, warm weather, warmer weather, right? You can see rain maybe even reaching Canada right there, or Canadian border. Again, what this will result in, we'll have to wait and see. Some models show rainstorms, uh, maybe with a little bit of snow. Some show a little bit more snow. That's a little, a little hard to predict. You can see the European also shows activity. It's not coated between a frozen, frozen and a rain. So all you will see here is just, um, is just, um, it's just kind of precipitation in general. But you can see that towards the end of this forecasting period, we see storms starting to brew from the south and whatnot. And these could really be powerful and strong. And uh, we'll have to, you know, obviously keep an eye on this. So for now, that is basically it, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will keep you guys uh, updated. I will upload one more video tomorrow. But for today, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya. Bye.